This tutorial will teach you the key concepts to script in Second Life. You can do a lot with scripting, such as making a radar, a door that rotates, a pose ball that triggers an animation, or even a teleport to make navigation easier. Scripts are the brains of our objects. We can put a script in any object to give it intelligence. Linden scripting language is based on events. An event is when something happens in this world, such as when a person touches an object, or collides with it, or when someone pays the object. We have 33 events which can trigger our code, and most importantly, only events can trigger our code. Let's take a look at a basic example. In scripting, we make script sandwiches. Everything is contained within a sandwich. The default is like the top piece of bread, followed by an open bracket. At the very bottom of this script is a closed bracket. This closed bracket is our bottom piece of bread. Now, the touch event will trigger our code when someone touches this object. Notice that this event forms another script sandwich with its own open and closed brackets. In between these brackets is our function. The owner say function will send a message only to the person who owns this object. So this function is the meat of our touch event sandwich. The most important thing is that all of our code will be contained in events. Notice here on the bottom that the owner say function is outside the event. This will not work. Our functions must be contained inside our events. Now let's take a closer look at this function owner say. The owner say function wants you to use a string variable. A string is just text surrounded by quotes. On this graphic where it says owner say string message you can see that this is telling you to use a string but now you will write in an actual value so we write owner say parentheses open quote hello me close quotes the quotes are what make hello me a string at the very end of the function we put a semicolon the semicolon will end the statement. We use a semicolon to end every function. In Linden scripting, we have seven types of variables that we can use in our functions. An integer is a whole number, like 4, 73, or negative 50. A float number is a decimal, such as 4.3, 70.0, negative 400.50. A vector will use three float numbers, which are decimal numbers, such as representing a position, x, y, z, or a color, such as r, g, b. Let's take a look at another function called set color. Set color uses two types of variables, a vector for the color, and an integer for which side of the cube to color. Now coloring involves three numbers, the RGB. The first number represents red, the second green, and the third blue. The values are from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. Now if in the first position, the red position, I write 1.0, and in the second position I put 0.0, .0 in the third position 0.0, .0 this will be red. If instead I put 0.0, .0 in the middle it's green and if I put it at the end it's blue. Now to get yellow other colors we're going to mix red and red and green together to get yellow. Now black would be an absence of any value so it's all zeros and white is three ones. Now to get darker colors darker shades, we're going to use values less than 1. So 0 0.7, 0 0.6, and we can get any color in the spectrum.
Now the cube is made up of six sides. In programming, we start counting at zero, so we number the cube zero to five. Zero would be the top of the cube. Five would be, five would be the bottom of the cube. Four would be the right side. Two would be the left side. And one would be the back. So we'll have to zoom around. 